and gentlemen boys and girls good evening and a very warm welcome to today's webinar which is about breaking into product management and we have with us two amazing founders to share their unique perspective i can assure you that today's webinar is a unique opportunity to for each one of you to learn about product management entrepreneurship and get some leadership advice and practical advice so are you guys with me if you joined us for our previous sessions you know i love the chat box buzzing it'll be great if i could run a little poll and if you could introduce yourself so i would want your name where you come from and your background quickly i i love i want to see all the energy in the chat box i can see a lot of good evenings which is great come on i would love if you all could introduce yourself where you come from what kind of background do you have that would be amazing Pala, good evening. She's from marketing and she's coming from Bengaluru. That's amazing. We have Rupesh. He's like, good evening. Rahul, good evening. Come on, guys. I want a lot of energy in the chat box. There are so many people who are attending this session. I'm Abhinav Gupta, founder of DeepX AI and DevOps. That's amazing. A lot of heavy words, Abhinav. But good evening and thank you, Abhinav. Where are you from? You haven't mentioned that. Nikhil says good evening to everyone. Good evening. I'm Mukesh from Mumbai, ex DC D two C founder. Oh wow, that's amazing. Akash is from Lucknow, having a background in IT, ITES of around five years. Wow. Good evening. Antra Morya, buying and merchandising Bengaluru. Great. Wow, guys, amazing. Ashutosh, consulting and from Hyderabad. Harsha here. Good evening, Harsha. Sheikh now, Sheikh Shah Nawaz, he's a search into search engine optimizing, optimization from MIT. That's amazing. Hi, Kavash. Hi, Deepthi. And Deepthi is from, Deepthi, sorry, Deepthi from Bengaluru. We have a lot of people from Bangalore, by the way. Come on, guys. I want some more introductions. I want to see energy. Ashutosh Consulting, okay, we've done that. I'm waiting for a couple of more replies. Quickly, guys. Nikhil. Nikhil Gupta currently working at SSE at Walmart Bengaluru and has great inclination towards product management. Looking forward to learn, learn more to this session today. Definitely guys, I can guarantee you that you guys are going to be learning some amazing things today. I think without any further ado, it's time for me to introduce our lovely guest of honors and speakers for the evening. Before I individually introduce each one of them, I just want to let you all know that both our speakers come from educational excellence and have plethora of experience. So please make sure you make notes of each and everything that they say. Are you guys with me? Yes. Our first speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is Raghav Verma. Raghav Verma is the co-founder of Chayos, India's biggest chai chain cafe with 200 plus cafes across India. He's an IIT Delhi alumnus and prior to this, he founded PrepSquare, an edtech assessment platform. This is not it, guys. Raghav has been selected as one of Forbes Asia's 30 under 30 in the retail and e-commerce category in 2016 and Fortune 40 under 40 in 2021. Wow. Raghav, it's truly an honor to have you here today. Thank you so much, Kavar. Lovely to be here. And, and, and thank you for the 30 people who took out time on Valentine's Day to come for this webinar. Yes. <laughs> Our, spec our second speaker, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is Jimmy James. Jimmy James is the CEO of Propel Edge X and Nava Mind and the ex-president and CRO of multiple VC-funded technology firms. He is an alumni of IIM Bangalore and has enabled multiple firms to build stronger foundations for rapid growth with a scalable, repeatable, yet agile framework. Jimmy is also a visiting faculty at the Hari Shankar Singhania School of Business. Jimmy, it's a pleasure and a privilege to have you here with us today. Thanks a lot, Kavach. Um, 
pleasure to be here and again thank you so much everyone for taking time out on a valentine's day to be with us yes i but i am pretty sure we are going to make it worth their time uh, so thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for joining in i am going to get the house open and my first question to both of you is that what is your story and it will be great if you could walk us through your initial career paths and like how did you land up into entrepreneurship into product management that'll be great raghav you take it first cool so uh, so i grew up in bombay i went to iit delhi to study chemical engineering and uh, chemical engineering ka zyada kuch kiya nahi hai maine <laughs> i i uh, i started working in a consulting firm called opera solutions uh, great uh, great experience obviously you know I, i was i was i was just out of college i was working in new york uh, working working with fedex american express you know great great clients uh had a had a great life there met a lot of good people uh and then somewhere you know one and a half years into this i i just had this kida that kuch to karna hai matlab like like i have seen this life i can always get back to this life but but i really want to do something of my own so uh, so me and three other friends started this uh, this uh, edtech company called prep square uh, very similar value proposition to what like by juice and an academy and all have today but this was way back in 2011 okay so uh, so us time pe we we built a great product realized ki uh, great product bas hamare liye hi tha <laughs> customer did not adopt it uh, and uh, yeah so we so we ran that for a little over a year and we realized we were a little too ahead of our time and and actually like the big the big jump came in uh, after after jio came in and then after covid happened is 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 when edtech really got adopted uh, <clears throat> so then i my thought was that i want to give it one more shot uh, i want to i want to give startups one more shot and then uh, so so me and nitin got in touch nitin had been working on on the idea of chaios and uh, for me it was like like i was always interested in fnb so this was uh, this this seemed like a this seemed like an interesting bet so i was like chalo karte hain and it was it was as simple as that it wasn't it wasn't anything more than that uh, Chaios idea was was very very basic, but uh, but uh, very powerful is what we felt, and we and we still feel that. Uh, so it's a chai drinking country. India is a chai drinking country, but the minute you step outside your house, you can't get a great cup of chai. So so started with that simple problem statement, and have been have been going about building since then uh, to to two hundred stores today across seven cities. uh and uh, yeah do doing a lot of interesting things built a built the world's first chai machine uh started delivering hot chai you know lot of lot of things that 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 you know would would people would never have associated with chai so yeah want to want to keep doing crazy things want to keep innovating and and you know get get uh, get a better chai experience closer to the customer wow that's great i mean i am a big fan of chaios and i'm pretty sure a lot of the people who are attending today's session are also big fan of chaios jimmy what about you like how how did all of these things happen yeah sure but great story raghav not that excite not as exciting as raghav's but uh, so yeah i finished my uh, engineering way back in uh, 2008 and uh, my and i joined the startup working out of the basement of a building in bangalore as a full time intern and that was in 2008 and then i didn't really know much about startup should i join work or not and uh, after a three month internship i took a, a safer route joining uh, uh, tcs uh, as everyone else and i also ended up joining then I regretted after six months because um the startup got acquired for a pretty big more than half a billion dollars in the next two years so it was that's when it struck me that should i have just stayed there <laughs> there was nobody to mentor me or tell me but uh, that was my biggest learning Uh, but from there i really uh, picked up and uh, had a accelerated career progression even with tcs i after two years i moved to japan and uh, stayed there uh, became a young a young business development manager moved into um uh, the management career and then moved to europe and uh, worked, became a youngest vice president uh, with a mid sized firm and saw it going through an ipo and uh, but the whole zeal to come back to india and be a part of the startup ecosystem was really heavy so i finally really fought in my family and decided to come back to india um left the job 
fresh with a full time mba and then jumped into the startup ecosystem and uh, been a part of almost five startups now as a founding team member and uh, touched wood all of them are still thriving and surviving and uh, in the space of artificial intelligence cyber security and all the hot topics uh, it was amazing to to again travel around the world building uh, these businesses experiencing accelerated growth leading fundraising managing the board and as a founding team member and raga would vouch for it you end up doing almost everything there is no clearly defined role you have to step into a different uh, wear different hats when it's required and then as the company progresses your role start becoming a little more organized and uh, we did that and uh, uh, also got pulled in with uh, by vc and pe firms as a strategic advisor and i work with them as an investment advisor and also mentor a lot of startups with them and uh, it was and also work with a lot of consulting firms as a thought leader um, bain and mckenzie and others and it was last year when i felt uh, the strong calling of of why not really expand the scope and why why just uh, stay with one or two firms and that's been uh, mm-hmm. into uh, entrepreneurship and started propelegex which became um, a startup studio and accelerator and incubator and uh, i was always very passionate about uh, education and i strongly believe that uh, you know the 95% of failures of startups that happen if you really need to solve it we have to go down to the grassroots which is education and that's when i also launched my second firm which was mainly the taking entrepreneurship to the grassroots which is to educational institutions business schools and engineering schools and so on so that's when the second company started which is more passion plus experience plus a uh, business model and so on so this is my story um, so yeah bringing in the global experience and having been on both the sides of uh, being a uh, um, a founding team member a founder as well as an investor and being the vc and pe firms have kind of seen the actual gap that uh, founders usually face in turning a dream into reality so so yeah trying to bring in everything together to be of some value to the startup ecosystem in india wow that's great jimmy i want to dig a little deeper you talked about wearing multiple hats i think that's one of the common things that every product manager has to do now that you've worked with like or have built businesses across you know different regions whether it's apac us europe what do you think are like the major cultural differences and how did you navigate through those you know how did your strategies change working through like different regions countries uh, and you know different sectors as well yeah you know it's just a great question um to be honest uh, you cannot it's very difficult to build one product that uh, meets everyone's requirement uh, because you have the cultural nuances at the same time even within one country itself if you only think about india india itself is so culturally diverse um that you really can build either for one segment and, and not if you try building for all segments at the same time i think you are diluting your value proposition it's a, it's very similar to that uh when we built something uh where the engineering team was based out of india everyone was so biased most of the time it is the bias everyone thinks that in their head they have figured it all out that this is what the customer wants and so on so they with their assumptions they start building the whole product and the company just follows right but um, this was the biggest learning that what you have built in india would maybe sell in india will not sell in the middle east will not sell in uh, say the us and so on and what was required was uh, just following the same approach everywhere where which is uh, you you think about customer centricity so interview customers in each of these geographies understand the market nuances which may be regulations or anything else and 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 clearly understand what percentage of the product can fit into all markets and what will really need customizations and then come down and prioritize that okay now how do we utilize our resources uh to prioritize feature development for which markets and so on so yeah that's that's one of the key learnings uh, that we had when we were uh, building global companies and trying to expand rapidly got it that of my next question is to you you talked about innovation now fnb is rapidly evolving so how do you stay ahead of the curve when it comes to you know products and innovation that you would want to do give us give us like insider into like chaios and their things yeah perfect so uh so i think you know covers the the biggest learning of of the last few years for us has been that uh as the company becomes bigger right you you end up getting more and more distant distanced from the customer 
right and uh, we we uh, we would spend time at the cafes but you know we we we, we didn't really understand what are the what are a lot of the trends that are happening so i think the the biggest the biggest factor of success in a in a product management role or in or in uh, any kind of product marketing pmf kind of a role is customer empathy so what i mean by customer empathy is that you know just understanding everything that is going on in the life of a customer today and deeply understanding those things not just getting into say you know i can i can come and ask you a uh, a very basic question we can have a we can have like a one minute conversation and and i you will tell me i can ask you what do you like about what do you like about chaios what would you want to change that's 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 very superficial because because customer will just say ha theek hai ye badal do ye add kar do kuch naya leke aa jao that that's that's basic ya ya dam sasta kar do once you start to get into you know talking to a customer and asking them that acha tell me about the last time that you came in, into uh into a chaios what what was your what did your day look like like how did you take that decision of 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 coming here what did you order how did you go about deciding what else was happening who were you with uh and then kind of calibrating that going into data and understanding that okay ye insight aayi hai now i have a hypothesis now can i take that hypothesis and actually understand that what is happening in my data and possibly you know there there might be there might be other players out there who are doing a great job at some of those things where i am lacking at uh, so so i think this just like you know customer empathy and taking a very 360 degree perspective and going deep into understanding rather than just like uh you know it's it, it's easy to do a survey and just ask basic questions and you know you'll you'll just get superficial answers but but going deep is is what actually helps you understand that what are those trends which are going on in a customer's life uh i think some i think one of the brands that does that really well is blinkit if you if you see the way that they keep keep reorienting their their app every day with with you know uh what is what is going on in the in the customer's life like uh i'll just give a very very uh, interesting example so during diwali they were the only ones out of the entire quick commerce set who had dog ear muffs like this just think the level of customer empathy that you have that you know that some of my customers are going to be looking out for this and and it's going to be a last minute purchase uh, it, it's it it's just that ultimately like how well do you know your customers and rather than sitting inside a boardroom and thinking of innovative ideas you you go down to the ground and you understand that what's going on in your customers life and then you think how do you add value and innovation from there is actually more impactful than just just you know thinking of random good ideas because random good ideas may not kuch matlab i might suggest one idea you might suggest a different idea and 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 whose ideas better who knows right so true that of another thing like if, you know how did your role change because i mean chaios grew really fast so how did your role through the initial phase of chaios to now like how how did you how did it change actually like the, the the role has been changing very frequently uh, so so me and my co-founder nitin we we've, we've kind of like swapped responsibilities uh, twice now like this is this is the third iteration of it and uh, i i have at at one point of time i was taking care of everything which was which was say the foundations required to build the business and then then i took over running the actual business he took over that bit so uh, so yeah in a in a startup i think in the early days there's obviously like you're the only one so you're doing everything but uh, but over a period of time also i think uh, it, it's it it brings fresh perspective if you if you constantly keep like you know uh, bringing in bringing in new verticals under under yourself it's just a fresh look at that right good jimmy i would want to ask you one thing how do you think because i mean you know everyone says that data is the new oil So, how do you think data is playing a key role into product management and decisions relating to that? A uh, very critical role, to be honest. Uh, but it is. But the more I work with uh, startups and also advise a lot of startups, I realize companies that call themselves AI and data heavy firms themselves don't use data for their own operations, which is really surprising. Okay, um, uh, but whether it comes to uh, you know when you get into ideation down from there to when you think about features down to when you interview customers and then once you launch your mvp and uh, and you think about adoption you think about how many active users how many repeat users there are so many insights that are available 
Uh, sometimes I think people, uh, or especially uh, uh, companies, get so overwhelmed with there are so many insights they really don't know how to interpret and what to do. That's one, and uh, so they stop it. Or number two, they actually just continue with the gut feel instead of having data driven uh, decision making. So all I would say is, uh, but thankfully with the whole digital thing becoming stronger and stronger, uh, companies have realized that if they do not become data driven, uh, the competition can just disrupt the show in no time. So uh, I think uh, with, and there's also easy accessibility and more education as well now on uh, what are the key parameters that you could uh, leverage for decision making for business and uh, also how do you judge if the customers are liking the product or not etc and uh, how should you prioritize your resources and so on so yeah data driven decision making and strategy is critical and I think it's for everyone to start using it because it's very easy now to use and understand and interpret there are free tools available as well and at the same time even if, if you pay uh, there is a lot of customer success uh, from the product side available as well so that you could use the data really well for your business and decision making. Okay. No, actually, why did I ask you that is because a lot of the people who are joining us for today's webinar are in different junctures of their life. You know, some of them have just finished their undergrad right now. Some of them are yeah. into work of two years, yeah. three years, and they would want to navigate. Do you think like a full-fledged MBA in product management is a better call than a general MBA or, you know, how would be their next progression like into the life of how they could get into product management? Do you think an MBA is the right answer that that to a full-fledged one into product management? Yeah, see, uh, we are in a digital age. Uh, there was a time um, when general MBA was all right, would be okay. And I, I have myself done, done that, right? So I can actually vouch for it. But uh, we are in a digital era, uh, in, the, in a digital age where technology is right now at the center of every business strategy. You cannot say that, hey, uh, I am not a technology-driven business. Uh, so I am, even if you're FNB, if even if you're any business, at the end of the day, you have to use digital, you have to use technology, right? So there is no running away from it now. And that's why a specialized MBA in product management actually prepares you with general management MBA related skills plus a lot more. And it gives you a lot more application oriented training um, that I wish I could have had that time because I eventually ended up leading technology and product companies. And I had to do a lot of on the job learning because you are working very closely with business, with technology, with design teams and with everyone, right? And, and, and you should be able to lead, right? And to be able to lead, you need to earn respect. And the fastest way to earn respect is showcasing skills that are, are readily usable. And uh, this is what a specialized MBA actually gives you that in the two year, it actually prepares you to hit the ground running in a product management, product leadership and so on. Got it. No, I think that that definitely makes sense. And I'm pretty sure this will answer questions that a lot of people have. Now, yeah. One question that I always wanted to ask you, uh, even before the call, I was like, which look yeah. It was, uh, it is like, because, you know, I mean, Chai is a very traditional market. But then, because you need to stay ahead of the curve, you need to innovate. And with innovation comes a lot of risk. So if you could walk us through and the, everyone who's watching this webinar today of how the journey of a new product launch at Chaios looks like, that'd be amazing. Got it. Got it. So uh, a new product launch basically starts with identifying some customer need, right? So so we would we would say that, say for example, uh, we talk about. Uh, monsoon launch right uh where we want to launch a good snacking product for monsoon that's the brief right so so the the teams would end up getting into a lot of data would end up would end up doing those deep customer conversations to understand that what does a what does a chai occasion uh during monsoons look like and uh possibly you know we'll, we'll get a lot of these like oh we like to have something crispy we like to have something which is you know when we come to the cafe we want something which is bite-sized and uh, we would then look in the data and see that look, this is a this is a kind of product size that we don't have which exists. For example, it might just be that you know everything that we have, customers are saying it's a little bit more filling. We want something that is light, and our data is showing that there are maybe thirty percent transactions which are only chai transactions. And we want to do something. We want to give those customers something for those transactions. So, uh, so that's where the brief comes from. That can we have something snacky? which would come within a 70 rupees to 99 rupees price point. And uh, then, then we would kind of 
work on a few concepts uh, we do very extensive customer trials for us it's easy right we we just go to the we just go to the cafes and we say that uh, we'll 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 catch a hold of 20 customers and we'll get them to try it and 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 if it works it works right and then we iterate upon that launch it in about five six cafes before which it actually goes live so so that's how that's how it pretty much like from the customer input from the data input and then going into developing it doing those quick iterations something that we've really learned of of late is that take a product to the customer sooner than you know wait for it to become perfected and then take it in the end uh, so so say you know the team comes up with a a kima samosa for example right and uh, we are all very confident about it but then you know there are there's some feedback i'll say that acha isko bhi better kar dete hain usko bhi better kar dete hain it needs to be maybe bigger or smaller whatever it is uh, it makes sense to actually go to the customer when you have say a half ready product uh, instead of saying that look i'll perfect the product and then if the customer rejects it you already invested so much time into it so early feedback loops are very important and uh, rapid iteration uh, that's that's where the concept of an mvp comes from right like minimum viable product uh, minimum viable product is that basic product that you can take to the customer if that basic kima samosa at least gets a 8 on 10 rating you know that you can take it to 10 on 10 but if that if that kima samosa gets a rating of 3 on 10 you know that the the concept doesn't click with the customer at all so that's that's how we end up doing that right i think one of the things which is common both between like you and jimmy both are talking about like you need to keep your ears on the ground and actually hear like customer feedback that is just so important now like i told you like the audience uh, wants to get into product management so raghav what would be your advice for people who want to just like break into this industry irrespective of whatever background or industry they come from how could they do that see product management is a very very interesting uh, very very interesting skill and it is it is becoming more and more in demand uh, because that is what is uh, there are there are so many consumer businesses consumer products everybody needs uh, a product manager to be able to do that uh, i think i think you know people from a marketing kind of a background a mba student a, a technology a, uh a technology student you know all of all of them can apply and can can kind of get real world experience i think there are there are a lot of there are a lot of these uh, these uh, consumer tech companies uh if 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 you were to start off with an internship with one of them or or, or you know as a as a fresher start off with a job in product management that's that, that's also an easy way that's also a good way for you to get that hands on experience because nobody can like product management while you can you can learn it uh, theoretically but you know applying it is what actually gets uh, gets you to become a really good product manager yes no that's that's def definitely true like you need to have hands on learning now jimmy i would want you to answer this what do you think are like key qualities that every successful product manager should have you know so that or whether they can learn it through the way learn it practically learn it hands on what what would be those key qualities be i would divide it uh, into hard skills and uh, also some very critical soft skills so while uh, see we we understand product managers uh, have to be cross functional champions right number one they end up uh, also talking to customers but at the same time they also have to inspire and work very closely with the engineering teams with the design teams with the marketing teams with the sales teams with the operations teams to get the data and so on Uh, so you can either be a hero uh, with all these teams or you can be a thorn uh, with all these teams right so you have to have uh, the skill to influence without actually having the authority to influence okay um, because you your role may not say the chief product officer but your even as a product manager your role is very critical so number one is the cross functional collaboration and that's where Uh, this is a skill that you really learn with uh, uh, you know that's your personality and also learning working very closely with such teams gives you an appreciation of why their jobs are also important what why their roles are also important that's one number two is uh, having a big picture thinking or strategic acumen uh, because a lot of times uh, you you know depending on the stage of the product maybe you're at the concept stage so you literally have to firstly visualize yourself and then also inspire others to visualize like the way you are visualizing so that everyone is motivated to build the concept to take it to design otherwise only you are thinking others are just going to be just doing it without without really 
any involvement. So strategic acumen is important. And then uh, uh, other than these, having uh, uh, this, uh, I, I would say having basic knowledge and understanding of the concepts of uh, how does a product marketing work um, having uh, having customer, I wouldn't say customer empathy only, but uh, really being a customer champion. Okay, knowing that building a product only works with customers. You do not build a uh, product with your cross-functional team or with your bosses. You actually build it with the customers. So being a customer champion, so cross-functional team collaboration, being a customer champion, and uh, uh, having. Uh, a knack for database decision uh, decision making again. Uh, so these four, I would say, would be at the top four of my head. Uh, there are others as well um, that um, you acquire. Uh, if you haven't learned it on your job, then you acquire. And uh, for example, the understanding of marketing and sales and uh, also clearly knowing the commercial side of the product, which is the financial metrics. How does that uh, really plug into your features. How do you prioritize features, prioritization and, and management and so on. And when it comes to MVP development, uh, your design and everything comes together. So the design thinking aspect of it. So these are other hard skills that you acquire. But I think if you have uh, the, the top four with you, uh, at least the basics, uh, the basic foundation, I think everything else can be acquired and, and developed. Yes. Good. I think these were very important insights and I'm pretty sure each one who's listening to us uh, is making notes of everything that you both are saying. Guys, we are going to move to a very spicy section of a uh, spicy segment of this webinar, which is the rapid fire. So who wants to go first? I can go first. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I'm going to ask you some hot questions and I'm expecting some rapid answers. Let's get started. Raghav, here's your rapid fire. One word to describe Chayo's product philosophy. Authentic. The biggest trend in f at the moment. Regional cuisine. Favorite Chayo's product. Palak Patta Krispies, Hari Mir Chai. <laughs> One book every entrepreneur should read. Hard Thing About Hard Things by Norowitz. Startup life, is it exciting or exhausting? Both. <laughs> the most unexpected source of inspiration for a new product? Arm papad for arm papad chai. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. One ingredient that makes any product better? Sugar, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One app that helps you stay organized? Uh, I use uh, Evernote and Todoist. Best advice received from a mentor? Uh, so one of our one of our advisors gave us this advice that uh, the customer gives you permission. The customer gives your brand permission to do few things. So it's slightly long answer, but uh, say like if if any of the coffee brands were to launch a bun maska, the customer wouldn't go and have it there. It's 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 very like deeply ingrained inside us, but uh, it, it there is there is a boundary that the customer draws with respect to your brand, and uh, that that permission is not there for you to launch anything. Like for example, uh, if 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 we were to launch a, a a croissant, I don't know if it would work or not because because people don't associate croissant with chai. So so I think that that's that's interesting from a product and customer perspective. Yeah, definitely very very solid. Last question. Critical trait for a leader, for leadership in a startup. Get your hands dirty. Nothing more than that. <laughs> wow, this was good. I love the arm papad wala answer. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's you now. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. One word to describe your approach to product management. Um, Value-driven product development. Most impactful tech, tech trend right now. Uh, AI powered hyper personalization. Okay. A startup you admire for its product strategy? Canva for democratizing design. Yes, definitely. One book that has significantly influenced your business philosophy? What got you here won't get you there. Wow. Global market, is it challenging or opportunistic? <laughs> it's both. There are challenges, that's why there are opportunities. Yes. 
an unconventional source of inspiration for you? Uh, that would be risk taking or my friends, I would say. Okay. One tool or technology indispensable for modern product managers? One tool, uh, project management like Trello or Asana. Okay. Favorite productivity app? Uh, for me, again, it's my to do. Okay. Critical skill for global business success? I would say cultural intelligence to be able to accept and appreciate uh, diverse, diverse thoughts and ideas. Facing disruption, adapt, anticipate, or accelerate? All of the above. <laughs> we have to be proactive to anticipate um, and uh, learn constantly and very quickly embrace change. So it has to be all the three. Great, guys. Amazing rapid fire. So here's a little clapping. Thank you so much. This was amazing. Next segment that we have is the Q&A because there's so many people who are listening to us. I'm pretty sure a lot of them have questions. Uh, so guys, please feel free to put in your questions in the chat. I will pick it up from there and start asking them both. Uh, one of the questions Akash Srivastava has already put, and I think this is for you, Raghav. How do you get such inputs from customers? So while you were, I think we were talking about innovation is when he wrote this question. How do you get such inputs from customers? Does Zomato or offline stores have this feature? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the so the Zomato and Swiggy teams obviously help us out with, uh, you know, what are the what are the trends that are happening right now in the market. Uh, but yeah, offline stores, you just need to like, like, sit with customers, talk to them, observe uh, what is happening. Uh, like I, you would you would find me doing uh, doing say order taking at at the counter in, in, in different stores, because that's, that, that's what gives you the real pulse of the business. Uh, another very interesting thing is just, just like, just like me standing at the door of a chayos, you, you see people passing by and then making the decision whether they want to walk in or whether they don't want to walk in. And they're like, chayos chalna hai, achha, pe ye nahi hai, chalo pe and that's the, that's like the, the best, the best end to end funnel insight that you can get. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, Jimmy. Rutuja is asking, I have heard that product management jobs are being replaced by business analysts. Is that so? No. Um, see, the way the, the names of the roles may be titled could be different in different companies. But business analysis is just one part of the product manager's role. Okay. So you cannot replace that. Okay. So people do transition from business analysis. Uh, business analysis to uh, product management or product management is a larger role than business analysis only. Okay. So it's not an apple to apple comparison. It's a step up from business analysis. Hope that answers. Got it. Guys, Rahul Gautam is asking what can be the next level tech integration in the interior space? Customer centric solution. Cause I have a product idea. Just wanted to get another press perspective. This is what Rahul is asking. Jimmy, you can take this. Okay, so uh, this is something related to home innovation, if I am not mistaken. Uh, so there are a lot of solutions around home innovation. Yes. Yeah, so there are solutions around home innovation that are coming up. And one of the key pain areas uh, that people are facing or are solving for is how do... So while there is a 2D rendering of a home design or an idea, um, the 3D rendering is what people really struggle with. Because a two D to three D had a lot of, has a lot of loss, and I think a lot of uh, startups are working to solve this problem of three D rendering because that is going to take it to the next level, and uh, that really brings down uh, the decision making time, time to market, and a lot of things, and will be really a boost to the real estate sector. So hope that answers. That's my view. If Raghav, you have any that, if, yeah, Rahul, would you want to add something, Raghav? Uh, no, I don't actually have a lot of expertise on, on, on this bit. So yeah. Great. Rahul, Rahul is thanking us though. I think he's saying exactly that I have in mind and maybe more, uh, he would love to connect with you. So Rahul, Rahul, you can connect with Jimmy, uh, please follow him on, uh, or send him a request on LinkedIn. He will love to connect. Uh, Raghav, we have a question from Prasad and he's asking, how can one effectively scale a franchise model? Got it. See, uh, 
in the early stages of of starting up a retail business it is best not to get into a franchise model immediately because uh it's it's very tempting it's it might be easy also in the short term to get a lot of to get a lot of franchise interest people invest the money uh, but ultimately the kind of consistency that you are able to deliver especially in in food and beverage beverage it's very tough even even in retail i would say that you know being able to run a few stores by self uh there is a franchise model that actually works well which which is a franchise being an investor a franchisee being an investor but a uh, uh, but you running the operations yourself and you owning the pnl and and you know giving them a commission based kind of a structure uh that structure is actually much better because you know just just giving franchises you won't really understand your own business you won't be able to give a consistent experience to customers so it's it's generally tricky in early days until you have a model that's completely set it can be scaled up and then maybe maybe then use a franchise model uh when you when you use it to scale okay raghav i like to add another question to this sairam is asking how do you create a successful brand despite entering a very competitive market i mean there's there's no silver bullet answer to it it's just it's just keep doing right by the customer keep keep working on your execution keep iterating uh there's there's absolutely like i don't think anybody can tell you one space that ye kar lo and and you know you are you are going to create a magical huge 500000 crore business out of it 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 just takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of iterations ultimately things click like some a lot of things will not work for you and, and then something will, will will really start to work for you and uh, then you you just keep you just hold on to that and scale definitely i think it's there is no like one size fits all anyways and it's a lot of like trial and errors while you know you find your uh, pmf jimmy a lot of people are asking questions relating to the mba and rupesh is asking one such question which is can an individual as a fresher build a career in product management oh yes absolutely uh, i would say uh, age is age is no bar in today's times uh, i think raghav is a great example of that as well uh, you know there was a time when people used to ask hey can i be a fresher and still be a ceo of the company uh, i think a lot of people have answered that uh, with, with their experience that, that there is no age to to be an entrepreneur and very similarly there is no age to be a product manager right so uh, you uh, the day you have an idea and you want to build uh, your own product you are already a ceo and a product manager and everything correct um, in the same way even professionally if you have to uh, think about it uh, you could uh, take up roles as a uh, see initially when you jump in um you you start as an entry level product manager because there are multi faceted skills that you need as a product manager and uh, you start learning it on the job because you are thinking about the uh, design and technology and uh, and then strategy and so on right you on day one you cannot just learn everything but on the job you keep getting opportunities for one role and then the second and then all all of it together comes and starts giving you career progression to more senior roles in product management so that's how it grows but the answer is yes uh, that you can start building yourself to to a product uh, leader as well as a cpo role right from your day one after graduation another follow up question from that uh, jimmy nikhil is asking what do you think is the scope of product management roles in india is it worth moving to a pm role leaving software engineering um see again people uh, it it also depends on your preferences um see i am somebody who has uh, been at leadership positions of technology firms and uh, i have had people who have been amazing software engineers at the same time also uh, amazing uh, product managers and the company needed both and and both these roles also make money okay product manager to be honest is a comparatively newer role in this whole ecosystem it was not always existent Uh, as more and more product companies, and especially in today's times, as you have uh, technology at the center of the business strategy, always there is there is this cross, uh, uh, I would say, section of uh, technology, business design, etc. And that's where a product manager role started becoming more and more important. And there are there is more and more demand for this role because this is a role that could talk to customers, get the requirements, and now turn it into a a product with an understanding of technology and design as well right so um, this becomes a very cross functional heavy role which could also take up uh, take different career trajectories to become a ceo to a cto to a cpo so you have these multiple trajectories that open up 
Um, and uh, so I would say that uh, if you want to only make a career in technology, uh, you could still be a product manager and continue to specialize in technology or software engineering only, uh, because you will have a lot of business skills uh, over software engineering that you can apply uh, to a broader business spectrum and also gives you better career progression um, and opens up more opportunities for you. So uh, that's what my answer would be. Um, if if no, that... definitely, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, I think this also answers Anmol's question, which is again like moving from an HR role to a product management role. So I think it's it's very multifaceted, and people from all different backgrounds can get into it. Uh, yeah. I have one last question for Raghav. Raghav Lakshita is asking, I have a clothing brand. So like, what all marketing strategies should be done for promotion of my brand? If you could just give her a couple of insights. Got it. I think. Uh... I think the best bet is to try to uh, try to be available on all of those, all the digital platforms. I think one thing that you really need to solve for is just being available, being visible wherever, wherever the customer is. Uh, it would definitely make sense for you to do something inside a mall, for example, because you've got a lot of, lot of captive customers there. So your, your mall would, it would end up, uh, you know, uh, helping people understand what the brand is about. And then they have an option to purchase across all the channels, be it Amazon or Mintra or Flipkart and everything. So I think, I think that's the most important thing. Uh, have a, have a happening social media, uh, have, have in, in early days, what is most important is like use your existing customers to get more customers, try to do like, like a lot of gorilla marketing, which, which, you know, with, with less money, you can create more impact, uh, try being part of say, say like festivals or uh, say there are like events which are happening, try and be there. I think, I think just, just like being, being very, very dynamic and agile and, and, you know, trying to frugally just get the word out. That's, that's the best bet right now. Yes. I think that's, that's very important as a strategy and the bets to make if you want to grow your brand from like ground zero to level up. Now I will hand it over to Jimmy because uh, he has a presentation to make, which is regarding HSB's MBA program. So Jimmy, you can take it from there. Sure, I'll just give a very quick overview of uh, uh, of the program, uh, which is the full-time MBA specializing in product management at HSB. Uh, this will also answer some of the questions that uh, most of you had. For example, uh, general MBA versus the specialized MBA in product management and so, and, and so on. So see the the... The key thought or the, uh, when it comes to the structure of the program, uh, this slide actually talks about the three track learning program. Um, so the first track is a general management track, uh, which teaches you or shares uh, knowledge about the basics of marketing strategy, finance. So everything that a general management MBA would have taught you is taught in this, in this particular track. This is very important. See, and these three tracks together uh, form a holistic product manager. And that's how these were designed uh, in conjunction uh, with a lot of inputs taken from industry leaders. So the general management track is, again, marketing, sales, finance, strategy, uh, and a lot of these general courses, uh, the knowledge of which is very important for you because when you work with cross-functional teams, uh, this basic knowledge and uh, forms a very strong foundation for you to... Uh, collaboratively uh, work with them, earn respect, at the same time be able to take uh, very critical decisions uh, for these cross functions. The number two, and which is the heart and the core of this course is the product management specialization. So this is where uh, you, you, get, you get to learn about every single stage of the product life cycle and you get into the best practices um, and the cases and uh, you taught uh, by elite faculties from uh, uh, top-tier uh, IMs as well as other top-tier uh, institutions and plus industry practitioners as, as well who have hands-on experience having built um, product companies and successful companies. And uh, the third one is the leadership track. So all of you know how, say, take, take the examples of uh, Satya Nadella or, of, or Sundar Pichai. Uh, they actually are great examples of somebody of people who, from a technology background, got into product management kind of a roles and then uh, had those transferable skills to eventually become CEOs of such large enterprises. So what does it take for you to transition 
to leadership roles in product companies is what is being covered in this track where uh, this track actually gives you those behavioral and the soft skills when it comes to leadership, uh, when it comes to um, building uh, high performance teams um, and how do you really um, inspire and lead and also uh, how do you communicate as a leader and so on. So these three tracks together, they were designed so that you learn the fundamentals of business, you learn the fundamentals of product management, and then you also learn the fundamentals for to become a, a leader on, on the product side or on the business side with firms. And now uh, this is clubbed with application. Now for the application, there is a six month uh, internship program and these are dedicated internships. Six months is a long time uh, and it has been uh, designed in a way so that um, you have enough time to apply it in real time. So six months is divided into two modules. One is a two month module with uh, large enterprises and uh, which is a two month internship with large enterprises, um, um, the likes of uh, Paytm or a Make My Trip and so on, large uh, product firms. And uh, then you have four months of uh, dedicated, again, internships with cutting edge startups. Um, why this whole thought of startups was because, uh, again, startups gives you an environment which make, and as Raghav said, get your hands dirty uh, because they really at, are at a early stage of their uh, product life cycle. So to get to see how do products uh, get built right from uh, an early stage, and uh, how how does it really evolve through the product life cycle is something that you get to learn here. So these are the dedicated internships and a lot of more than 35 companies are on board as corporate partners, both uh, large enterprises as well as cutting edge startups uh, who will be who would be offering uh, these uh, internships to the students as well as also participate in the placements for these students. And while you do these internships, you also have a dedicated one-on-one -on -one mentorship with um, product managers and leaders from the industry so that uh, you're not just left alone while you're doing your internships with the companies, but you actually have uh, mentorship available from uh, companies, from uh, folks from companies like Microsoft to Zomato to a lot of other companies, right? So we, we are really talking about uh, people uh, working with elite product firms here. And uh, there is this whole affiliation to ISPMA, which is the International Software Product Management Association. Um, and the course is aligned uh, to ISPMA, which actually brings in the global uh, product management best practices to this whole course. And the uh, chairman of ISPMA, who is uh, uh, Professor uh, Hans Burkitlos, uh, he would be coming in, uh, spending time in India uh, teaching this course um, himself. Uh, so he would be taking a lot of the product management related tracks uh, as for the ISPM curriculum. And this is important because uh, at the end of the course, you also get a certification from ISPM and uh, that's a globally um, uh, acknowledged uh, product management certification. So it prepares you for uh, global roles. And uh, over and above all this, you have more than 100 plus hours of uh, workshops, which are actually taken by industry practitioners again um, from these various companies who are already on board. So in a way, uh, this is a holistic program that uh, uh, has been designed to give you a lot of application oriented experience along with a very strong theoretical foundation um, so that you are really ready to hit the ground running when you uh, join any product firms after your course. So I'll take a pause there to see if you guys have any questions. But so that's about uh, HSB. The round two applications are currently on. So uh, we would invite you to uh, uh, apply. And if you have any other questions regarding the course, uh, feel free to uh, uh, reach out to these numbers or, uh, or directly can communicate with us through any social media channels. Wow, this is great. I think this answers a lot of questions that people had. I personally also was getting a lot of questions regarding uh, the MBA of HSB. So I hope this answers. Thank you so much uh, to Raghav and Jimmy both for you know taking out time from your very busy schedules. Uh, Rupe, uh, sorry, just to cut you off, I think Rupesh has a question, Jimmy, which is what stipend amount can be anticipated during internship? Money is important. Yeah. 
See, with uh, larger enterprises, uh, uh, it's very similar to the stipends that uh, the other school students get, which is upwards of uh, a lakh per month. Uh, with startups, it could vary uh, because it depends if they're bootstrapped, if they are, uh, and so on. Um, so I cannot really give you a number right away, but with the startups, the objective was more of uh, learning um, than just uh, the, the money. Uh, however, of course, they will be paid internships as well. Yeah. One more last question, Jimmy, uh, is by Rahul Gautam. He's asking, how would this course look for a business professional with business professional with 9.5 plus years of experience? I already have received offers from four UK universities, Exeter, Burnell, Birmingham, and Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, at the end of the day, product management related MBA is for everyone. So as I said, uh, the more the experience you bring to the table, I think uh, you end up joining at more senior positions after the course because you already have a, a lot more experience while coming into the class. So, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, folks who are experienced and senior would also do this course. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, also applicable to you. Uh, however, um, I wouldn't say however, but uh, nevertheless, I would say we can further discuss about your aspirations. I really don't know what the other four offers that you have. So without really understanding the overall uh, career that you have aspired for yourself, it would be very difficult to say that, yeah, uh, it's an apple to apple comparison. However, I would say, yeah, with your experience, you should also go ahead and apply. Yes. Okay, I apologize for the, I was saying last question, but I think there's another very important question that Mukesh is asking, which is relating to scholarships. Uh, like I said, money is important. So um, Mukesh is asking, what about scholarships if they are available? So Jimmy, if you could talk about that. Um, yes, scholarships are available. Uh, they are merit-driven. And uh, uh, round two, uh, please go ahead and apply. And there is a whole criteria um, for uh, scholarships, which can even go to 25 to 50%. And uh, But again, it's merit-driven. So uh, go ahead and feel free to apply and share details. Make sure that your application has uh, is well-rounded and has all uh, the key parameters around uh, that shows your holistic experience, not just academics, but everything else as well. And uh, yeah, the application, the admission scene can get back to you with the details uh, on on the possible scholarship. But yes, scholarships are available. Okay, this is great. I think these were the questions that we have, guys. In case if you have more questions, please reach out to the number or also the website or any of the handles. Sanat has already put the link in the description uh, of the website. So please go check it up. And once again, thank you so much, Raghav and Jimmy, for joining us today and taking out time from your very busy schedules. Uh, I was making notes of each and everything that you said. So just to summarize it for the whole of the audience, my biggest takeaways, Raghav, from you was about customer empathy, like how, you know, having a 360 degree perspective is very, very important while when you're building up. At the same time, how rapid iterations while doing product management are really important. Uh, and you know how you were talking about the MVP. I think it's, that's one of the very important things that each one of you, whether you want to become an entrepreneur or build products, it's very important to look at MVP always. At the same time, I'm getting your hands dirty. I, I Jimmy has also quoted it many times. Now I'm also going to be using that always. So uh, guys, to each one of you who's listening to us today, please get your hands dirty, specifically when it comes to product management. Like Jimmy was also telling, while you are interning or you know helping somebody else build products or whatever, it's very important that you learn it from the ground up because that is what will help you learn the most, you know, uh, whatever the case is. Now, Jimmy, thank you so much, like once again, for spending our time here. You definitely answered a lot of questions that people had regarding MBA. So thank you so much for that. You've taken like done the, all the heavy lifting. At the same time, thank you so much for talking about cultural intelligence. I think each one of us, each one of them who's listening to us today um, might just be leading companies and products globally. So having to understand people from different backgrounds, cultures, and you know, like how you said, one size doesn't fit at all. What works in Dubai might not work in India. I think that's one of the very, very important takeaways for everyone. At the same time, you talked about data-driven strategies, which again, I think should be there in each one of them who's making notes of today's session. Because if you are not data-driven, you are going to be missing out on a lot of things today. Because I think major decisions in today's time, whether it's of a small startup or of a very big multinational is being uh, taken through data. And I think that is, again, very important. So thank you so much to both of you for joining today, uh, taking out time from a busy schedule. I hope audience has gotten all the value add. I personally felt that it was literally a war of all the value bombs that you were throwing. Uh, and I'm pretty sure each one of them have taken a lot of takeaways. So thank you so much.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Kavach. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you to the audience. You guys were very participative. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much to the audience for joining us today uh, for today's webinar. Have an amazing evening. I'll see you all later. Take care, guys. Bye bye.